I know you have, you've played for teams who are under pressure and currently Bournemouth are, you know, under real pressure trying to fight for their lives. But if you look at this, was there any pressure and how elated are you with your first goal for, for your country? I wouldn't say there was any pressure. I mean, I know when I come on, I know what I need to do. I need to make sure I'm effective for the team and try to get a goal. So, I mean, there wasn't any pressure in that sense, but the time was ticking. So. We needed to act fast and luckily it dropped in the box to me, so I can't complain. Um, Antoine, congratulations once again. I mean, you got a rebound that um, hit the back of the net, but did you realise that just before you struck that ball to hit the back of the net, Joseph Adu had gotten the ball back behind the line? Um, yeah, I mean, I was uh, right in front of it, so I, mean, I thought he would have got the final touch and then just rolled out to me, so I mean, right place, right time. Congratulations. Um, congratulations on scoring your um, debut goal on home soil. Um, I've watched you over the past from your days at Bristol City, the final matches you played before you went to Bournemouth. And I've described you as a super sub. You see yourself as one because I always tell people that you are the Edin Dzeko of the Black Stars. <laughs> I mean, I always want to be in the starting team, so, um, you know, if I'm not selected, I make sure when I'm on the bench and I'm coming on, I make sure I'm ready. I've, I've warmed up well and make sure I'm effective for the team, like I said, and, you know, luckily, the ball fell, fell to me and I scored, but, you know, I always want to be, I always want to be useful whether I'm starting or on the bench as a goal scorer, so, yeah, I'm happy, I'm happy today, and, you know, we have to go again in the next few days. Well, um, Antoine? Yeah. Um, how important is this goal to your international career and also club career based on the fact that you've not scored in some time now? And also, uh, describe the atmosphere back home in London. I'm sure your family and your <laughs> friends will be watching. How would the atmosphere be? And if you frame a picture of today uh, in your room and keep the memory forever. Um, I would say, so the first part of your question, um, it's obviously a good thing as a striker you want to score. So I haven't scored in a while. It's good for the confidence. So I know that leading up to the next game and when I go back to club football, I know that I've got the confidence um, for on goal. So, you know, just have to take that with me. But um, yeah, just I'm, I'm happy with that goal. Needed it, definitely needed it for the confidence. And yeah, I just have to keep going now. I just have to keep building on top of that. And the atmosphere, the atmosphere is always good here. Like, it's, it's, never, it's never ever bad. Um, my dad was actually in the crowd. so. It's obviously nice, but um, yeah, the fans are always good. They're always, they're always good and bad, so I can't complain. Hi, Antoine. Um, Michael here, once again, Sumpa FM, Sumpa TV. Um, do you think your debut goal has earned you enough currency to buy you a spot in the starting line? I mean, <laughs> can't, I, can't answer, I can't answer for that one, but um, you know, I'm just obviously prepared no matter what the circumstances are, um, whether I start, whether I'm on the bench, still the same thing anyway. Just make sure I'm ready if I'm on the bench. And then if I start, make sure I provide for the team and get some goals. So, I mean, it doesn't really make a difference. I'm always ready. My name is Betty Yossin with DH1 TV. Antoine, I mean, after the 45, first 45 minutes, ending in goalless, and I know tension was so high, the fans were expecting a goal. But what was the conversation among you players coming into the second half and hoping that probably you get a victory? Um, <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't in the, the team talk for um, half time, but um, I can imagine what we would have been talking on Chris what Chris said. Um, just you know, keep doing what we're doing because we were playing well. We were playing well in the first half, but we just weren't clinical. So just doing the same thing over and over again and making sure we put away a chance. So, uh, I'm happy it fell to me and obviously went to the last minute, but we played well the whole game. So, you know, we just need to build on that and make sure when we go to Angola, we do the same thing. I'm sorry, my name is Soa, GBC Kumase. Uh, though you are not a coach, but what will be your approach? You and your colleagues going into the game in Luanda on Monday. If you are selected, what will be the approach? I think the same thing, really. Um, we went into the game knowing that we've got the quality to um, do damage to the team and. Um, yeah, I mean, it'll be the same thing over and over again. Just building, building from the back, building through the midfield. Then when we get chances, we're, we're clinical. So I wouldn't say anything changes. 
Right. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. Wish you safe travels. Thank you, Coach, for coming. Thank you.